your boy Al, aka Fishing with Big Al, and I'm here on a cold, frigid, frigid morning on a Friday morning today, of December 23rd, 2022. And man, it is freezing down here in Corpus Christi this morning. Anybody that lives down here know what I'm talking about. It's cold. This is a vacation paradise for a lot of winter Texans, for a lot of people that love to come down here during this time of year. Um, I live in it. I've been down here since 2007. I love it, man. It's a home away from home. It's, it's just it's just beautiful down here. I love Corpus Christi. The weather's fine all year round, but it is cold today. Um, so that being said, no fishing. I'm not going outside. It is freezing outside. Too cold for the, for the big man to go outside and do anything. So what's up? I hope everybody's enjoying your day. I hope you're ready for Christmas. Spend time with your loved ones, that person that you care about. Friends, um, if you're traveling or whatever, be safe out there. Um, hope you get to your place. And when you get there, I hope everything is good and you're able to return home. So be safe, whatever you're doing, all the way around. Word up. So anyway, let's get to it, man. I've been getting questions about my setups for catching pompano. So I'm going to talk about that. This is something I've been targeting since this year. First time ever doing it for targeting fish. Uh, and I had a great turnout once I really studied what I had to do, what I had to get into them, uh, paying attention, learning the water, learning where they may be at compared to where I thought they may be at when I caught them by luck. So let's just get into it, man. Let's talk about the reels. Since we're talking about catching them at the beach, the best way that I can say catching pompano would be making sure that if you're going to the beach, you're going to fish the surf, fish with surf rods. That is the best uh, setup in my mind that I can use. I have smaller rods and smaller rods, they work, but surf rods work. They're the best for getting a lot of stuff accomplished. It just, it just kills the middleman takes all that guessing out the way, just use surf rods. You can cast them far, you can cast them short, you can cast them however you want to cast them. You can put any size weight on you want with a surf rod. As compared to a small rod, you can't do that. With surf rods, you can put it up as high as an eight ounce weight if you choose to. I use five and six pyramids. So let's back it up now. Surf rods is what I like to use whenever I go to the beach to catch pompano, uh, then that's working to the line. My line, my line product that I like to use is uh is pro line and that is 65 pound test i like to use the color green that is my choice i love green uh, line i don't worry about the yellow blue nothing like that it's all green so i've been using that since day one i've never switched it up and it works for me i've been catching plenty of fish with that color uh so i love using green um the original i think that was the original start of the colors anyway was green so i've always stuck with that um and then moving into my um, tools as far as what I'm using to hook onto my hooks and to the line and things like that. I love using just a single swivel. Where you at? Where you at? Where you at? I love using just a regular single swivel clamp, which is right here as you see this. This is something that I grew up using in St. Louis. My father is a, a rest in peace, but this is all he ever used. He used to double these up on his line and I learned from him. So that is what he always used. And I've seen him and myself, uh, him and uh, my other relatives. I've never done it, so I'm not even gonna fish story and tell lies about anything. The biggest I've ever caught was probably 18 pound flathead. And that's only because I don't live in St. Louis anymore when they started getting boats and stuff like that. They started taking the boats out because my father got a boat, my brother had a boat, my uncle got a boat, and they just used to go up and down the river. So they got to the sloughs and they used to wear out some big 75, 85, 90 pound channel cast once they got the boats because then you can get back there and get to them compared to what you can do when you're fishing off just the land at the rivers. So once you get them boats, you can get to a lot of big fish. Just like you do in the ocean, just like you do down here in salt water. When you got a boat, you can get to all the fish that you can't get to from the from the uh, land. So we're talking about grouper, red snapper, mai mai, uh, lings, uh, Big fish, man, just bigger fish and different kind, different different varieties of fish when you got a boat. So it's a big difference. But talking about this, like I said, my father is land. I've seen the pictures so he, that he used to send to me. And his concept was always these. No Carolina rigging, just regular singles. So that's what I use now down here myself. I use it because I, I, I used to do Carolina rig and I stopped doing it. Mainly because a lot of fish can swallow your hook. So I got away from using Carolina rigs. 
just for that reason, because you swallow it, and if it's something that you can't keep and it's too small in order to get your hook out of there, you might have to cut it if they swallow it too deep and you don't want to kill them. And then again, if you're just trying to get the hook out, then you're going to kill them anyway because you got to get that hook out of their mouth. So that would be that concept. So I use a single because that keeps the fish from swallowing the hook. It just hooks them right in the gill plate. That's as far as the hook goes, and that's it. And you, are, you, and you retrieve it out every time. The next thing would be the hook size. My hook size choice would be two and three size circle hooks. Three, preferably. But sometimes you go to the store, uh, depending on where you're at, if you don't feel like going somewhere else, and you're saying, no, whatever they got here, that's what I'm getting. Sometimes you can't find threes, so I would just use twos. Twos are good, but at the same time can be a problem. If you're using twos, you better make sure you got your drag loose on your line, on your reel, because if something comes up and grabs it, that's a monster or something like that, he can snap that hook in two, and that'll be it. That's all she wrote. Everything else can hold, but he, once he put that pressure to that line, that hook may not hold and it may give. So you got to make sure you got your drag set loose just so you can reel and deal and get them in because you might have to fight on your hands. So stand by for that. If you can get a three, that's better because it's a little bit stronger. Um, a circle three, depending on what brand you like to use, I like to use Mustang, I like to use Eagle Claw. Um, and those work for me. So, um, yeah, so that's it for the hook. Then we're going to move to the weight. For the surf, I love using five or six ounces. Uh, and it's a reason for that because I'm not fishing the first and second gut for the Pompano. I'm actually walking past the first gut. And I'm walking out right above or right before I get to the second gut. Sometimes that's what I had to do this year because the Pompano, believe it or not, they were out in deeper water and they were not coming in close um, on a regular basis. I caught them by mistake in close. And that was my concept of thinking when Pompano runs ran, they were going to be in the first and second gut. And if you can get on a high tide, that's all you had to cast into and you would get them. But that was not the case. No matter how you how you try to do it, you would either get a bunch of hard heads in the first and second gut, or you'll get a bunch of whiting in the first and second gut. So I would walk to I got to the second gut, cast past that, try to get it out there in that deep good water, and then I'll walk back in to the to the uh, to the land and put my reels in my reel holder, and I will wait for the action to start. And every time I had better results that way. I would you know in the first and second gut is so funny. You can cast into it and you hit nice size reds, you hit black drum, things like that. But then if you wanted Pompano, you had to go out and you had to cast out far. Didn't already get to them. Um, and that was the way it just worked. Um, if you did get them in, if you did get them in the first and second gut, you didn't get them like back to back to back to back as you would when you walked out past that first to that second gut, cast out as far as you could, and that was it. But yeah, that was the best way to get them, man. So uh, that is the question that somebody asked me, how was that happening? If you could use a seven foot. And my, like I said, my, my answer is, yeah, you can use a seven. You can use whatever you want if you know what you're doing. But knowing what you're doing and meaning it's going to work is still two different things. It doesn't mean it's going to work. It just means you can use it. <laughs> so you see what I'm saying? I'm kind of being funny. So yeah, that's what it means. Um, 12 footers, surf rods are always, to me, just more better at getting the results you're looking for. Um, they're not expensive. People may think a surf rod is expensive, but it's, it's actually cheaper. <clears throat> like like for the, for the uh, ugly sticks, I think they run anywhere as high as $59, maybe $49 or something like that. And these are 12 foot uh, big, water, big water rods, and they're perfect for that. I've had mine for years. The only thing I need to do is take some Neverdoll or something like that and take a little bit of rust stain off of them every now and then and then remove the rust off of it to, uh, to for maintenance purposes. And I've had it for years and I've had no problems with it. My eyes have never broken on them. Um, I take care of them, you know, the best way I can. And I've been fishing with them since day one um, since I got, what, about 2013, I think I, I replaced those, those rods. And I think I've had them that long, and they've been doing a wonder for me. The only problem is now, since I use those reel holders, and they sit in the reel holder, they start getting to that rubber grip a little bit. So, yeah, that is a concern, but it's still good. So, I'm still good with that right now. They don't need to be changed out for that reason. They're still good. So, that is something that is perfect. The other thing, like I said, I don't know if I spoke on it before, but... 
the other bait of choice that I was using too was the fish bites because Papa No Love Sand Fleas and Fish Bites got a brand. It's called Sand Flea. It's orange and white. This right here, you put on your hook, rig it however you feel comfortable. Me, myself, I like to cut it, you know, cut a piece off about this much, about that much of a, of a length. And then I like to take one end of it, put it, th put it onto the hook, right? Run that down, then come back and find the other bitter end of it and then put it on the same hook again, that bar, and put both of them through that bar and let it just hang off. It's gonna have a curved look to it. And with a two or three, that hides the hook better than put, trying to put it on a five. If you put it on a four or five, you're gonna see a lot of hook exposed. Uh, but if you put it on a two or three, it's not that much hook exposed. It's actually got a nice ball a bait around it, and then when the Pompano come and grab it, they up the whole thing and hit that hook, and that hook got them. And you try, and you just stand by for the fight. Pompano are very strong fish. They're very strong as far as um, I don't care if you bring it in a smaller. They all are very strong fish. They come in sideways, and that's almost a tail sign to let you know what you hooked into, which would be a Pompano. When they come in sideways, it's always usually a Pompano. They, I mean, they actually run like. And they swim that way when they're coming in because they're flat. So that's the way they do it. Uh, and you bring them in. They're, 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 they're actually swimming on their sides for some reason when you bring them in. And that is the that is that's so fun to watch. You be saying, oh, Pompano, I know what I got. It's a Pompano. Yep, and that's what it would be, a nice size Pompano. There's some big ones out there. So that's why I say leave that drag a little loose because there's some big boys out there too. And you don't want them breaking your line because they're strong fish. They're very strong. They're strong fish, and you'll see that when they hit. When a Pompano hit, if you didn't know what a Pompano hit looks like, the best way I can describe it is they're going to hit it real hard, and then your line drops. It drops down, and then either you catch up with it or, they get, or they're really full of action still. They'll pull it some more, but that line will drop, and then you really catch up with it, and then you're actually catching up with the Pompano because for some reason it looks like he's swimming in. And that's, I don't know why, I don't know if that's what he's really doing. I just know from the catenary, that's the best description I can give it. But your line will drop down and you will see like a dip in your line. And if it's just sitting there, nine times out of 10, the Pompano's on it, or it could be a black drum. Black drum do the same thing. But a lot of times the Pompano, for sure, that's how they hit. They'll hit it real hard. You'll see that tip just flutter, flutter, flutter. Then all of a sudden it pop like a whip. And then you'll see your line drop in the catenary. And then you catch up with it, and nine times out of ten, it's a pompano. So it's a lot of fun catching these guys. Plus, they're very good eating fish. They're like top uh, choice for me coming out the water. Um, it's, it's mainly pompano first, then probably flounder. If I had to put them in order, it'd be pompano, flounder, Spanish mac. If I had to go in order, uh, black drum, mango snapper, and then the red drum. Sheep said are good too, but sheep said is a once a year thing in this area when you're catching them. You can catch them off and on by luck. If you're fishing for them and you know what you're doing, fine. I don't really, I don't fish for them until they really get here. And then when they get here, I get my fresh share of them and that's it. Because once you do start catching them, they're here like bluegill and you try to, you try to get away from them. You actually, you actually leave the spots and try to go somewhere else, trying to hopefully you can get away from them. And once they come in between February to April or something like that, yeah, man, they can be all over the place. And it's not a lot of big ones, so that's the thing about it. It's some big ones out there, but a lot of times they be the medium size. Those be the ones that be in your way, and you want to get past them. But yeah, when they really in here, they're in here, and uh, they could be almost to that point where you're trying to say, man, go away. I got enough of you guys, you know, and, and you're ready to move on to something different. But I've gone down to the surf trying to get away from them, and I'm casting out there because usually at the jetties is where I usually go get them at when I'm looking for uh, sheep's head, and then I'm going out to the surf, and they're out there, and it be and it don't be keeper size. It just be small ones. It's steady eating off your, steady eating off your line. So that's why I'm using fish bites a lot now because fish bites, I never caught them sheephead on a fish bite yet. If anybody had, put a comment in the box. Let me know. But anyway, man, that was my setup, my tutorial as far as what I did this year when I target popping on how I did it. Again, going over it, surf rod. Um, the hook size will be a size two or three circle hook. Uh, for, my, for my rig, I just use a single 
uh, swivel clamp. You can use you can use a single drop if you want. If that's what you like using, you can use that. Uh, but I just go with the single. I just went with the sing, single swivel clamp, and that worked for me. Um, and the waist size, a regular five or six ounce pyramid worked great in the surf. Uh, the other thing, like I said, you have to walk out past the first gut. A little bit to the second one. You might have to walk through the second one if you want. Uh, but it's a story why I don't do it. But anyway, I'll talk about that later on. If, if I see you in person or something like that, you say, hey, man, I heard you talking about a story why you won't walk in the second gut. Then I just share that story. Uh, but anyway, just sticking to the, the script of the video, which was what I did to get to the Papano. That was it. Walking out there, casting out as far as I can, walking back in, stick your line in the reel, stick your reel in the reel holder, and then stand by for the fireworks to begin. And that was the best way that I was catching them. So I had a great time with it this year. Uh, hopefully uh, continue it going when it warms up again. Get back out to fishing again. Get some videos going. I hope everybody, like I said, man, is enjoying your life. Whatever lane you ride in there, like I always say, ride it. Enjoy that lane. If it's not bringing anybody no problems, especially yourself. Um, and we're talking about positive things. We're not talking about the lane where you just say, oh, with my life, I can do whatever I want to do. Well, it ain't true. Your life is everybody's life, no matter what. People that's close to you, whether it's good or bad, it's, it involves everybody. So always remember that. Uh, but whatever lane you ride in there, man, enjoy it. And like I said, if it's not bothering anybody, including yourself, then keep it going, man, because that's what I'm doing. I love my lane that I'm in. I love fishing. I enjoy it. People that I know I ever get tired, that's all I like to do. And I tell them, yep. <laughs> Yep, that's what I love doing, man. I love fishing. I'm not going to act like I'm a fishing uh, everyday person, but I love fishing when I get a chance to get out there. And it's almost every day. <laughs> so, yeah, I love fishing. But anyway, this is your boy Al. I'm out. Everybody, man, God bless. Peace. Hit that like and subscribe. Let me know how, what you're into, and I'll holler at you later. Peace.